Hello Paddock's Press readers. While consulting with clients recently, it became apparent to me that while the requirement to have a maintenance, repair and replacement plan has been in place for some years now, some trustees and managing agents still seem to be struggling when budgeting for the implementation of their plans. The first mistake that I've picked up is that some bodies corporate simply take the total amount that their plan indicates they need to budget for for the next 10 years and divide it by 10 to get you the amount they should budget for the next financial year. This is not correct. The second mistake that I often see is bodies corporate only looking to the items in the upcoming financial year and only budgeting for those. This is equally incorrect. So, how should you be budgeting to fund your maintenance, repair and replacement plan? Prescribed Management Rule 22.2 says the annual contribution to the reserve fund for the maintenance, repair or replacement of each of the major capital items, referring to the major capital items included in your 10-year plan, must be determined by taking the estimated cost minus past contribution and dividing the result by the item's expected life. So, how does this work practically? Well, firstly, it means that you should be including every major capital item listed in the plan at any point on the 10-year timeline in your reserve fund budgets. In simple terms, the major capital items should be the line items in your reserve fund budget. Secondly, you should at all times be budgeting and raising contributions to fund the cost of every item in the plan even if it's scheduled for repair or replacement 10 years from now. For example, if your maintenance, repair and replacement plan indicates that you have to paint the building in six years, you should be raising contributions to fund that project now. Now for what's perhaps the most common mistake. If the painting of the building is scheduled to take place six years from now, but the item has been included in your plan and budgeted for, for the past two years, you cannot simply divide the amount of money you will ultimately need by six. Why not? Because you first have to subtract the funds you have already collected for that major capital item over the past two years. Remember, the formula provided in Prescribed Management Rule 22.2 requires that you first subtract the past contribution from the estimated cost before dividing it by the expected life. Dealing with the practical implementation and budgeting aspects of your maintenance, repair and replacement plan can be rather confusing. But I hope that this video will help you to identify potential pitfalls so you can avoid them and navigate your way around the requirements of Prescribed Management Rule 22 successfully. Until next time, goodbye.